Before we get into the latest on the Dallas Cowboys, subscribe if you haven't already. We will have tons of NFL draft coverage for you guys here. Tons of rumors and news and plenty of rants as well. Hit that sub button for daily Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos. I want to begin with the possibility of putting Tyler Smith back at left tackle. Now, both Joneses, Jerry and, before we went live here a moment ago, Steven uh, spoke about what the Cowboys' overall plan could be from that perspective. First, there was uh, this, this tweet from Clarence Hill kind of merging two topics. We will get to Tyron Smith and how the Cowboys are lying in a little bit. Says the Cowboys couldn't afford to keep Tyron Smith. Uh, Tyler Smith is the working option at left tackle going into the draft. Now, here's the actual quote from Jerry Jones. I think the interpretation of Clarence's tweet Maybe it wasn't quite one-to-one, -one, but that's okay. Jerry said this about Tyler Smith playing left tackle. I think that's a good, viable thing. Keep the idea uh, there. Don't dismiss that idea. Certainly, he's potentially, I want to say, a great player at left tackle. Now, I am mostly fluent in Jerry speak. I say mostly because it, it has gotten worse. Uh, in terms of like actually trying to figure out what the hell he's saying. It, it's gotten a little bit worse over the years. Allow me to translate. Tyler Smith is an option for the Cowboys at left tackle. They know if they had to, and if the year began right now, they'd throw him out there. They, they, that would be their plan. But with the way this draft class shapes up, more on that in a little bit, they would love to draft one. And they think there's a pretty darn good chance one of, if not the best player on their board, is going to be a left tackle. And that's actually always been their plan. What Jerry said isn't actually necessarily new. It's more of the, you know, it changed when they thought for sure they were going to have Tyron Smith and they kind of botched that contract to an extent slash he was going to get more than what he wanted. It gives them the flexibility of not potentially having to draft a left tackle. Now, here's what Tyler Smith has done the past years. By the way, or before we get to that, that is almost verbatim what Steven actually said today. Uh, Steven kind of laid it out there of like, you know, we like the, the, the tackle class more on some of those guys in a little bit here. But they could play Tyler if they had to at the left tackle spot. It's a matter of what's best for your team and what's best for Tyler. He was unquestionably better in 2023 at left guard. He had an awesome season. The penalties remain high. That remains an issue for him that maybe he'll continue to work through. Sacks went down. Hits went down. Hurries went down. The run blocking grade, if you believe PFF, went up from that perspective. Um, how much of that was the position change and how much of that was the, the, the oftentimes seen second step in year two? That's what the Cowboys need to find a way to figure out. So where do you want to play Tyler Smith? It is today's pinned comment, so take advantage of the upcoming ad break and go vote in the comments. LT for left tackle, LG for left guard. Now, if you had to play a game right now, your best five, I think, are these five guys, probably at these positions. Tyler Smith, TJ Bass, Brock Hoffman, Zach Martin, Terrence Steele. However, that does not mean it's going to be the case after the NFL draft. And I, I think there is a very real possibility of the Cowboys having a, this guy's awesome, awesome pick for us at 24 along the offensive line. So the offense sacrifice, now this is based on my rankings, not specific to the Cowboys. So you can make adjustments here and there for Dallas. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Sean. I doubt he slides. That'd be the home run, like the dream CD Lamb slide scenario, which is probably still asking for too much since you're down to 24. Joe Alt's not going to be there. Fuaga, I actually don't like as much for Dallas. I think, he's a, I think he's a right tackle, not really a left tackle, but I think he's going to be gone anyway. Amarius Mims, the, the risk is there. I, I am going to gamble on it. I don't care. Troy Fatanu, I, I think, could play tackle or guard. I think for Dallas could even be maybe a better fit with the ability to do both. J.C. Latham, I don't know if, if he's a left tackle. Jordan Morgan, I am intrigued by if he had... In, arms that were two inches longer don't let anyone tell you two inches doesn't matter they're lying to you and you never want your girl to say that either uh morgan's arm length is a concern i think for the cowboys too they might be higher on tyler guyton than i am i am anxious about him uh i almost would have felt better if you had tyron smith there 
but you don't have that option. More on that in a little bit. Kingsley Sumataya out of BYU, I'm intrigued by, but that's kind of more of a trade-down scenario for me. And Patrick Paul is kind of more of a day-two guy straight up. You could also go center or left guard, you know, interior lineman. You know, Jackson Powers Johns could play center or guard, I think would be a great center. Frazier, I don't know if he can really play guard, but who knows. Graham Barton is a left tackle at Duke, but it's going to play on the inside. If you take one of those interior guys, if you don't get a tackle in round two, you're probably going to play Tyra Smith at left tackle. So here's what I think ends up happening. You don't have to make a decision right now on Tyler Smith. There's no reason to. When you get to the end of the draft, you will know what your plan is based on who you took in this year's class. Today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You're picking two to six player stat projections and more than or less than on said stat projections. You know, you're going to try to get, you know, more than, less than, 13 points, 15 points for the NBA, whatever. You can also do what I do is the flex play. The power play gets you a higher payout. It does. It also means you have to get all of them right. If you go with the flex play and you get only one wrong, you still win. And that really did carry me uh, in the regular season this year for the NFL. There are still March Madness prize picks option. I got two guys from Creighton. They're Shireman, 17 and a half points. Ryan Kalkbrenner, I, not a massive jump from his points when you include rebounds and assists. So I like that one, 26 and a half. Terrence Sh uh, Shannon, obviously tougher competition than Sweet 16, averaged like four plus made three pointers this year. I love more than two and a half threes, Shannon. Plus, I think Illinois is going to win that game. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. I do want to mention these quotes here from Jerry Jones, who said the Cowboys, they couldn't afford to pay Tyron Smith what the Jets did. Here's the exact quote from Jerry Jones. You know how highly he's thought by us. We can't afford that. We can't afford that. He makes all of his incentives and things like that. We would really be wrecked. To be clear... That's not true. That is a load of crap. That is not accurate in any perspective of it. we would be wrecked. We would be screwed. Too much. No, it's not. You could have afforded to do this. So let's break down the Tyron Smith contract, the nitty-gritty stuff here. One year. Base salary guaranteed is $2 million. Signing bonus is four point five. He's getting that no matter what. It's $6.5 million. He has incentives. These do not stack, by the way. So 30% snaps, he gets an additional 750K. 44% of the snaps, it's 1.75 total. So it's not cumulative, it's just total. If he played the exact same snaps he did this past year, which was just, uh, it was in between 68 and the 74 we'll get to in a second, $5.75 million additionally, which would already be projected onto this team's salary cap because they are likely to be earned incentives. Pro Bowl, half a million dollars. The unlikely to be earned incentives, the additional things that you might have to pay Tyron Smith, right? 1.25 for 74, up to 6.25 if he basically doesn't miss a snap, which seems wildly unlikely. Each playoff win is, is, is an additional $250,000. The way the Jets st structured this cap hit, they added some void years to it, as the Cowboys often do, it's a one-year, $8.65 million cap hit. And I think, by the way, if the Cowboys had been close on the offer, Tyron would have come back. They were not close. And to be clear, paying Tyron Smith all those extra incentives is actually a great thing. It means your when-healthy left tackle played a bunch of games. When healthy, he's still really good. It's that you don't trust him to stay healthy. Which, if you're paying those incentives, it means he played a ton of games for you. And this idea that you pit all of them implies the playoff wins as if that's a bad thing somehow. I might be stretching a bit on that point, but whatever. I get to push my narrative too. In the end, the Cowboys chose not to pay Tyron Smith. And if you agree that, you know, you didn't want to pay that number, you think it's an overpay, you don't trust him to that, you didn't want to do that, okay. That's fine. That is very different, though, than saying we love the guy, we just couldn't afford to.
That is the pie lie coming through again. That a Cowboys team that has spent the least amount of money by almost a quarter compared to everybody else, they, 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 they just couldn't afford to. The poor, broke Cowboys couldn't afford to. Stop it. They were not close on the offer. They really weren't. That's why it went from, we're going to get Tyron Smith back to he's gone in like a 24-hour span during the combine because they weren't close on the offer. The Cowboys acting like less than $10 million in incentives is going to wreck their cap five years from now is a damn joke. It's not how this works. I know they are very anxious about these, the dead money in 2025. They shouldn't be. They've got no big contracts in 2025. And like it will probably end up being about $100 million of cap space. They're fine. It's laughable. They just don't want to spend the actual cash. And that, that bothers me. So rant over, at least for that one. What is your confidence level in the Cowboys front office? Scale it for me from 1 to 10 in the comments section. Now the Dallas Morning News has given an update, however brief, on the status of Lyle Collins, who remains unsigned after spending time on the Cowboys practice squad late this season. Here's what David Moore of Dallas Morning News wrote. A wild card to keep in mind is Lyle Collins, who played guard and tackle during his NFL career. He's still working his way back into shape and has been at the star during the offseason. So my first thought was, okay, what happened to the best shape of life stuff for Lyle Collins? Because that's what was said when it's like, oh, he looks great. He's good to go. Was he not? Did he get out of shape in the offseason, or is it just like the wild card, who knows, of we'll see type of deal? Would you bring back Collins? I assume it'd be a cheap one-year deal, which is never a bad thing, but would you bring him back? Y for yes, N for no. I do think wild card sums it up pretty well. You know, they gave him reps at left guard. It could be a, maybe a right tackle option. I've got no idea what he can offer at this point. We haven't seen him play football in over a year now. And it'll be about a year and a half where we would potentially see him again, frankly. So it's tough to trust him as a starting option, but depth is depth along the offensive line. I don't know. We, we can't be the, uh, I never noticed the expression, but look a gift horse in the mouth. Doesn't make sense here. That's what we're talking about here. Like if they sign somebody for a cheap one-year deal, we almost kind of have to get ourselves excited about because they did something, right? It falls into me for the, you know, if they want to, they had a good look at him, uh, you know, down the stretch last year, sure. I'll, I'll trust their eyes on that one. But I'm a bit, uh, I, I don't trust him to be a starting option for me at left guard or right tackle. Happily surprised if I'm wrong, but I think it's a wild card in the end. 